I'm Julia Signell. Um, I'm a developer at Anaconda. Um, I work on the PyViz uh, ecosystem, which is this umbrella of tools uh, that encompasses Bokeh and also some higher level libraries um, that wrap uh, Bokeh and also can render other with other backends like Matplotlib. Um, so I'm going to be running through this example that builds up to this, um, this dashboard that I've shown here statically. Um, so it will just be stepping through that um, in notebooks. Uh, so if you want to follow along, I've created a binder link. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how well that'll work. Uh, it's a pretty big environment. Um, but yeah, you can find it at my GitHub at PyDataDC um, 2018. All right, so I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, OK. So uh, just, to act, just to get situated a little bit, I know you guys have been in visualization talks all morning, but um, uh, what do we want out of visualization? So we want to be able to explore our data and see patterns. We want to identify bad data, maybe um, develop intuition about how our models work or how our um, systems work. And we want to be able to maybe present our data to other people, share it, tell a story. Um, and then, so what tools, what do our tools need to be to, uh, to facilitate those aims? So we want interactivity, we want to be able to zoom in and out, um, re-render on user input, um, maybe draw on plots, annotate. Um, and we want, our, we want this all, our work to be reproducible, so we want to be able to look at the same data again in a, uh, in a year, so we want our uh, our environment to be well-defined, um, and then we want to maybe be able to look at the new, different data, um, and then we want it to be shareable. So we want to be able to deploy a dashboard um, and share a notebook with environment specification with other people so that they can uh, reproduce the work themselves. So we're going to be looking at this data set, which is um, bird migration data. Um, it was collected by citizen scientists um, of different species uh, uh, and the Latlon and day of year. And then it was compiled by um, these scientists that I've cited here um, and into the centroid of a particular species at each day of the year. Um, so the data is organized, it's all in that GitHub repo. Um, it's organized in CSV files um, where each file is a particular species and the, each row is a day of the year with Latlon as the columns. So we're going to be loading this data and using intake. Um, you don't need to use intake, but it's just a convenient way to do this. Um, is that big enough? People can see it? Yeah? OK. Um, so you can just do intake open CSV and use a, a format string for Python. Um, and you'll load in all your data. So we have all the data here. Um, and that's just the head, but uh, you can look at the species column and see that there's um, 117 different types of species, um, and some of them have all the days of the year. Um, so we're going to be working towards a dashboard that looks like this. You saw a, a screenshot of it, uh, how it ended up in the end, but this is where I started. I wanted to create something like this, so just to orient yourselves, that's what we're going towards. Okay. Actually, that might not work well. So these notebooks takes a little bit. So we're going to start by exploring our data using hvplot. Um, this might take a minute to load. It's a kind of big notebook because um, I've already rendered it. Um, but hvplot is a new library, or a relatively new library that we've been developing. Um, that you, um, it it is very similar to the dot plot notation. If you're familiar with, uh, if you use pandas data frames or a lot of other data sets um, support it, like X array objects. Um, so we're going to be, um, and instead of returning a matplotlib uh, object, it returns a hollow views object, which we can, we're going to render in bokeh in this case, but you wouldn't have to. So you can just import hvplot like this. Um, and then it provides the, and then we'll be able to access it right from our pandas object. So here we have our data frame of birds, and we're just plotting the points of Latlon. And so this is an interactive plot, so we can zoom in, and it'll re-render. 
um, and we can hover, and it has all the interactivity that you expect in bokeh. Um, you'll notice that it's kind of hard to see all those dots. They're situated on top of each other. So we can use Datashade, um, which is a, another library um, that's used to transform data so that we are only rendering um, the count per pixel um, of birds. So you can sort of see more structure in this, um, but still not quite what we want. Um, we would maybe want to use color more effectively. So we can um, color by day of the year. Um, I've got, so each of, um, this is a circular color map so that it, it represents the data um, better since this is, you know, zero is 366. Um, so this is starting to get um, most of our information on this one plot, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so the, the only thing that's missing is which species is which. So by adding um, hover, we now have our whole data set represented in this one um, plot. Uh, so this is a good, HVPlot allows us to do this really um, straightforward data analysis um, and get a lot of depth on our data pretty quickly. Um, and you can just sort of iterate over it. Um, so to more effectively look at our whole data set, we might want, might want to split out um, different species and look at them individually. Um, so we're going to look at grouping next. So you can group by, uh, we're going to group by species first. So now we get this toggle and we can, or this drop down, and you can select different species. Let me <laughs> rerun the cell. Um, and you can select different species and you'll see that it appears in the plot. Um, and you still get all the interactivity um, and the hover, but now we can just look at a particular species and see the, um, the migration pattern. Um, so what this looks like in is hollow, it's actually a hollow views object, this um, P here that I've defined, uh, I've set to the um, output of the HV plot. And it's a dynamic mapping of species to points. So this might look a little weird, but um, if you are interested, uh, we'll get into that more later. Um, even if you're not interested, we'll get into it more later. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we can inspect just one bird the same way that we use a dictionary. Um, so if you're just interested in the Connecticut warbler, we can use that same P that we defined above and use it, since it's a mapping, we can um, just get one um, particular bird from it. Um, so you'll notice in this data that there's a gap, ooh, let me make this bigger, um, that there's a gap between um, day 77 and day 104. Um, so we can do a linear, um, and that's just a missing data. But we know where the bird was, right? Like the bird was somewhere in here. So we can just do a linear interpolation. Um, and so we'll just do that little cleaning. Um, and then we can look at the Connecticut warbler again. And it's cleaned up. Um, so that's just for our future analysis to make things better. So now we can combine some plots. So um, this is a slightly weird thing about hollow views. Sometimes people get confused, but you can use the plus um, operator to create layouts um, of plots that are linked. And um, you can use the times operator, which you'll see later, to, uh, to create overlays. So um, these plots, uh, this is a particular species. So as you toggle the species, both those plots are going to change. Um, and then you can also do things like zooming, um, and they'll both change as well. So that's, um, that's the end of the HV plot section. Um, and now we're going to move on to talking about pure hollow views. Um, it's going to take, OK. Um, so hollow views is all based around this idea that uh, you, should, you should annotate your data and then allow it to display itself. So it sets up this concept of a data set that's um, slightly, that has a little extra metadata than we normally would put on a data set. Um, so we have our data frame from pandas, and then we're adding in this d definition of the key dimensions and the value dimensions. So that allows us to explain um, what, our, what our columns mean semantically. 
Um, and so you can see that when you print it out, it looks, uh, you can see that the key dimensions and the value dimensions are very clearly separated. And then we still have our data in there. So it's just an extra layer of metadata that allows us to then make plots um, very quickly. Um, so for visualizing our data, we can now take that data set and we can just send it to points. Um, there's some styling up here, which you don't need to worry about right now, um, but just to make it a little um, bigger. Um, so we'll send it right to points and then we can do the same. Uh, we can also send it to different kinds of plots. So we have this P object now. Uh, and um, we can look at the density instead by taking the um, bird data set that we defined and we can make um, hex tiles so we can see some more structure of counts. And um, so you can make different types of plots this way. You can also do a lot of styling. So um, we're gonna set a custom color map to get the maximum visual difference between the species. Um, and so I'm using glossy colors, but it is not very important. Um, it's just colors that are maximally visually different. Um, and I'm going to set that to the species. So you can see that each species now is a different color. Um, and you can, so, so the, the styling is, can, can be controlled up here. We're going to see a different way of doing it later. But um, you can notice that P is the same P that we were talking about before. Um, so and the, all this change is the way that it was rendered in this one cell. So that's kind of an important thing about um, hollow views is that the data is kept separate from the rendering. Um, so you, ha you say what the data is like and how you're going to interact with it. And then you see how you want to see it, essentially. Um, okay. So we're going to do some grouping. So we can group by day here. Um, and this probably shouldn't have rerun that because it might take a minute. Um, so this is um, getting a, the the rendering options are getting a little more um, intense. But basically, I've added some different bokeh tools, and um, you can see now that if you drag this, you can see all the different days for all the different birds. And um, if you hover on these particular birds, you'll get some more information. You can also select um, and then do the dragging to see where they go. Um, so we'll be doing more of that. Um, but so this makes a hollow map, which is similar to a dynamic map. Um, and so we can still access each item in that, uh, in that grouping of plots. Um, so let's add another layer to the data. So we're going to be um, adding temperature data to see, uh, we, the hypothesis is that birds migrate because of temperature. Um, so We'll be looking at um, putting a global climate model underneath the birds um, to look at the temperature where they are. So we're going to be using X-Array. Um, you can just download it directly, or you can just call this data URL directly. Um, I was hitting <laughs> limits, so I downloaded it locally. Um, so this is just an import using X-Array. Um, uh, the time is in a strange format. Um, because it's the long-term mean um, air temperature, so it doesn't have a year associated with it. It's kind of a weird thing, so I just um, set it to day, integer day. Um, and then we can look, use HVPlot to look at it. So this is, um, this is what we get if we just use, uh, use the data set and um, plot um, x versus y using HVPlot. So we can toggle these things, so this is the pressure level and this is the day. Um, and so you can sort of see that you get more. I didn't originally fully understand what the pressure level was. Um, so, but you can see that you have more definition of continents at higher level. So uh, as surface pressure, as I found out. Um, so um, we're going to use 1,000 um, millibars for, th for ours. So we can just, uh, for the rest of our analysis, so we can just uh, select that, that one level um, this is just using X-Array um, select notation. Um, and so now we have our, um, our temperature layer that we can add to our birds. Um, so just a note that this is a dynamic map. Uh, there's a slight difference between a hollow map and a dynamic map. Hollow maps are uh, pre-computed. Um, so you make all your plots ahead of time. Um, and that's what hollow views does by default. 
HVPlot by default does a dynamic map, so you don't have to pre-compute everything, so it just computes on the fly. Um, so this will only work in a running notebook. Um, it won't work in a static website unless you pre-compute. Um, so we can see that uh, the keys on this, um, if we, so the keys are only going to be the ones just to further indicate um, that it's a dynamic map, we're only going to have the keys that we've uh, slid to, essentially. So if we do this again, we only have day one. But if we slide it around a little, then we get more keys. So we just have the ones. We've only computed the ones that we've needed, essentially. Um, since they're on the same, since the bird plot and the air plot are on the same, are both hollow views objects, even though one was created using HV plot, one was created using hollow views, we can put them on the same um, plot and do an overlay. Um, so this is the times notation to do an overlay. But this doesn't uh, quite work because um, they're on different, these two data sets are, have different longitude conventions. So, um, the birds are using negative for the Western Hemisphere, and the global climate model is just counting up from 0 to 360. So um, this is a good time to jump into uh, GeoViews, um, out of hollow views. Um, so GeoViews is just a wrapper around, um, it's, it's just a, 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 a superset of hollow views, um, but it adds extra metadata that is good for geo contexts. Um, so we can import it the uh, same way we were doing uh, with hollow views and um, add some extra metadata. So one of the important things that we're going to add is the coordinate reference system, which just says um, how the data are, what the data, uh, what, the, what the x, y coordinates are. Um, so this is using Cartopie, so plate carré just means um, latlon. Um, so this is our data set now as a GeoViews object, which looks very similar to the hollow views. Um, and now we can um, just automatically uh, plot the data. Um, so we're going to use do, show the points data. Um, so, so it's uh, all the same, but now we can overlay um, geo features on top of our data. Um, and th in this case, we've just overlaid the coastline of North America and South America. Um, and, but you'll see that it doesn't, it doesn't set, um, well, let's just keep going. I'm not sure what the next one is. Okay, so you can look, the points are the same as they were in the hollow views. Um, we can do grouping the same way we did in hollow views. Um, I just set dynamic to true to make it faster. Um, so we can do some grouping and, uh, you'll see that only the birds we render. Um, so this is starting to look good, um, but it's out of bounds because um, since it hasn't pre-computed all the plots, it doesn't know what the bounds should be. So we can set those explicitly and use tiles underneath. Um, and we start, it starts looking more like our, we want our dashboard to look. Um, and this is, um, so here I've set options directly on the object so that I can save it. Um, so this is a, instead of using cell magics like I was doing before, we can use these options um, directly on the object, which might look familiar, to, more familiar to people. Um, so um, you can zoom in uh, and since it's tiles, it re-renders. So there's a lot you can do with this kind of data. Like this is a good, way to explore your data, um, especially geodata. Um, you can do the same thing directly in HVPlot if you don't want to mess around with hollow views too much. Um, so you can just uh, directly, just from straight from the data frame, you can plot it. Um, if you just set geo to true, uh, it'll, it'll guess the coordinate reference system. You can also set it explicitly. Um, so this is the same plot, but use, created using HV plot. Um, so we can add the other layer again, which is the temperature data. Um, so this is now temperature data um, and the birds and the coastline. Um, it's starting to look 
pretty good. Um, you'll notice that the rendering's a little slower when you when you scroll, just because um, that's a lot of information to be sending to the browser. Um, so the last thing we're going to do, and I'll just stay right in the notebook for this rather than doing the slides. I think it gets a little confusing. Um, is create a panel. Uh, let me pump that up. Um, we're going to use panel to create a dashboard. Um, that's just the. This is just the um, loading in the data that we have been building up. Um, so this is the dashboard we're trying to build. So just to go through it in a little detail, there's a slider for day of year. There's um, the species drop down to select. There's a base layer of um, of whether you want your temperature data on or not. There's a little running table that updates, and then there's this uh, time series down here that shows. Uh, various features against day of the year, um, and then there's a map that that um, responds to these toggles, and uh, also um, you can select from the map and get changes to your other stuff. So the first thing that we're doing, so we're using Panel for this, um, which is a, a fairly new library, um, but it works with a variety of different types of objects. You don't have to use Hall of Views objects. Anything that can display in HTML um, will work. So, um, so first we're going to create a widget. Um, so this is a, uh, I've set the options, I've set the size, um, and then you can select from this and let's look at this, the value. So you can select different things and the value changes down here. So this is, looks like every other widget um, that you've seen. Um, and then we're going to create a, a, a player widget, which is for day of year. Um, and then we can look at that, um, how that changes. I set the step to um, more than one just so we don't have to render every single uh, day. And then the toggle to toggle on and off air temperature. This is pretty straightforward. Um, so now we're going to capture the streams from those widgets so we can use them in our dynamic maps. Um, so this is, uh, this is a little wonkier, um, but Bear with me. Um, so you set up uh, you set up your stream, and then uh, just a sanity check. Um, what you want is a function that has the uh, stream as an argument, and then you can use it um, to to generate a dynamic map using hollow views. So um, to see how that works, this is a, just a really simple plot of text um, that shows the different species that you've clicked on. You can see as you click around, that updates. Um, as you select different species. So that's just to understand what's going on here a little bit. Um, so we'll make a reset button for our thing. Uh, and you, if you click the reset button, everything unsets. So that's just some little component parts that we've, that we've set up. Um, now we're going to construct the plots. So these are all going to be the same as we have been building up to in our other notebooks. And um, so we're going to set up a birds plot, which is just the birds points um, with tiles underneath. So that's this one, um, same as we've been seeing. Um, and then we're going to set, instead of having the, um, instead of using this toggle here, or this slider here, we're going to set it, the, um, the stream to be the, the day stream from above so we can get it on the slider object. So um, now we have this. Now we are using a panel dot row to create a row of different things. So we have a we have our birds with our tiles underneath, and then we have the slider. So you'll see that um, this now responds. This it's a little slow. This just is, the player is slow, um, but it responds to the output from this uh, this this widget stream here. Um, it also still responds to this. Um, so um, it's, it just responds to both things. Um, it, but it doesn't, we don't really want to look at this anymore, this slider. We just want the player. So we can, um, if we print row, we can see that every item in it uh, has an index. So we can just select which ones we want by indexing. Um, so we don't want this one, um, but we do want uh, these other two, so we can just uh, we can just control which ones we get that way. Um, so now we'll add in another layer. 
Um, so I just was subsetting down to the area of interest, to the region of interest. Um, and then we can do a group by, same as we did above, or same as we did in the other notebook. And um, we've got, so we've got our, um, our um, temperature layer here. And then we can, uh, you'll notice that as we uh, toggle around, the temperature is hopping, the color bar is hopping. So we don't really want that, so we can fix it um, by looking at the min and max and then picking something similar and um, setting that to the range of the temperature. Um, and then the last thing is just adding a toggle to turn the temperature on and off. So when it's, um, so I'm setting the fill of the temperature layer to zero when, the, when this is untoggled. Okay, so we're building up the little parts um, and you can see the row there to, just to check your intuition about what's going on. Um, and then at this point, I realized that it's kind of hard to see these birds sometimes, so I added a highlight toggle, which just adds a white line around all the birds. Um, so the next thing is to do a little more computation. Um, so we want, the, we want to populate the table in our dashboard with uh, speed of the bird at any particular day and, um, temp and temperature. So the speed is easy to, is straightforward to calculate. Um, you just use PyProj and um, you can calculate the distance between, uh, for a given species from day to day. Um, so this is kilometers per day. Um, and then you can also set up, um, and then we'll set up a little time series um, to show the latitude and the speed versus day of year. Um, so I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, so this is a function that accepts um, species and uh, a y variable, and it outputs a plot. So um, if you give it a list of species and a variable, then it'll just do it. So um, it does lat and speed. Um, and then we can set up a dynamic map using the um, the time series function um, and the streams, uh, the species streams, which is the uh, species that you've selected. Um, so now we can see, um, we'll show another panel object. Um, so you can use markdown right in panel to, um, to just write some context. Um, and this is uh, how you can see the, um, sp the speed plot and the lot plot are updating um, as I select different things. Um, the next thing, so I just print out column to see what it looks like. So then we'll set up the table. Um, so we're going to set up the temperature calculation, which is just going to pick uh, the nearest using, this is x-ray stuff, but it's just using the nearest um, value for the temperature for a given lot on a day. So, um, so if you have you pass in the data set and you pass in a particular row of the data, um, which is one bird at one day, and you get the um, temperature. So uh, we'll set up a little table. Um, so this should start to look familiar. Maybe that there's a function that accepts two different um, values that we're going to be toggling between and um, sliding around. Um, and then the, just to check what the function looks like, we can input some starter values. Um, and then we'll create a dynamic map from that. And the last thing we need to do is to hook up um, the map selector to the multi-selector. So the multi-selector is the species options. Um, so we're going to set it so that every time you click on the map and select a particular subset of birds, that updates the um, species in the list. Um, and then um, this is just putting the pieces together. So we're going to make this out of columns and rows and panel. And um, I just, just kind of fiddled with it until it looked good. Um, but uh, it's only using the things that we've created already in this notebook. Um, and then this just sets up the object and names it. And then we're going to add this dot servable on it so that we can um, serve it from outside the notebook. Um, so since we've already been messing with these um, selectors, uh, we have those values, but we can um, reset. Um, and then 
you'll see that we have this dashboard, um, which doesn't quite fit on my screen blown up like this. Um, but you can uh, start it going and speed it up. And you can select. Um, one thing that I didn't quite get to hook up was selecting from here and having it affect the plot. But um, you can select from the plot and it'll update these. Um, so that's like further work to be done. Um, but you can see the birds moving about and you can see these table values are updating. Um, maybe that's a little too fast. Um, and then you can toggle between the speed and the latitude and longitude. Um, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys is that, uh, well, this is what it looks like printed out, so it gets a little gnarly. But um, you can serve this um, directly from the CLI um, from the notebook. Uh, you can also separate it out into a .py file and uh, just put the relevant parts because there's a lot of stuff in here that's not needed. Um, a lot of like looking at things as we go. So um, I can, let me close this to convince you that I'm really doing it. Um, so you can just serve the notebook um, and it's gonna go to this particular location, which I will refresh to prove that it went. Um, and um, I also have uh, these notebooks deployed um, on Anaconda Enterprise uh, at those bit.ly links, um, which I can give you again at the end if you wanna like just play with it. Um, so those are uh, externally available links. Um, so this is our dashboard. Maybe we'll shrink it down so it fits. Um, and so you can see uh, that's this is from our notebook. Um, we're just serving that directly. So it's, it might not be the best way to store your code long term, but if you just want to, if you have the notebook made and you just want to show it to people, um, it has all the same functionality. And it's um, this is n this is not static. This is like being, you yeah, know, this is a dynamic thing. Um, but uh, yeah, and you can also. Um, just create the, this is what they looked like when I slimmed them down a little. Um, so this is the app.py, um, just with the functions and the plots uh, and the widgets and stuff. Um, and just creating the dashboard. So um, I also, that one's, a, this one's a little laggy, so I also made one without any temperature. That's a little more um, pleasing, I think. Um, that just makes the birds go a little, doesn't have as much lag. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, if you are interested in learning more about this, you should go to pyviz.org. There's a lot of tutorials and stuff, um, and it'll step you through in more detail. But hopefully you got a taste. Does anyone have questions? Yeah? When you generate a static um, dashboard, does it send all the data all at once on first go when you load the site? No, so uh, the question was, does all the data get sent at once um, when you go to dashboard? Static. static one? Um, yes, I think so. Um, but this is not that. So this is a dynamic one. So it's got a running Python instance in the background. So I do a lot of visualizations of, say, like teeny plots of chemical structures, mm -hmm. and so I can use Bokeh now, and I have to do like I want a hover plot to show <coughs> the PNG image of a chemical structure. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have to create a custom, basically, function to decode and then run through Hello. To <coughs> do you support or have some way of interfacing mm -hmm. like images in the hover plots? Um, the question is, can we support images and hover plots for bokeh? Through, uh, through HVplot, through um, a, rather than having to write a whole bunch of pseudo. It's so, when it's, so when you hover, you have a plot that shows up. Um, I'm not sure if that's supported directly. So the HVplot is meant to be um, like shortcuts, essentially, so you can get places quickly, and then you can tweak it because you have a Hall of Views object. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't add a lot of new functionality. Like it's not gonna do anything that Bokeh can't do. Okay. It's just easier to do what Bokeh can do. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you do the panel serve, mm -hmm. is the backend running a Bokeh server or mm -hmm. is the Yeah. 
Oh, a question. Yeah, the question was, um, does panel serve run a bokeh server? And yes, it does. Yeah. When you were doing the grouping in the HP plot, uh, every time you switch grouping, it switched the XY scale. I assume you can fix the XY scale when you're doing that. Uh, yes, you can fix XY scale. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you.